Hi, welcome to the Joy of Vinyl. I'm Rick Coast. Today's show is all about something you might not really think much about, turntable mats and how they affect your sound. Vinyl collectors have a lot of things to stress about. For one, there's record care. There's also equipment choices, stylus replacements, speakers, static control, and many more little nuances that are really too many to list. All this to enjoy the warm and unmistakable sound of a stylus riding vinyl grooves. As the music plays, most collectors would tell you they are unconsciously thinking about the next upgrade or whether they should even bother. I do this all the time. I'm delighted with the sound I get from my setup. I also know it might be improved by adding a new, say, external preamp to the mix or swapping the needle for one a bit more expensive. You know, these unwanted thoughts, they poke and prod at my enjoyment like little devils clamoring for attention. Well, let's throw another decision into the mix. Turntable mats. Yeah, you'd think that one would have been taken care of for you so you wouldn't have to worry about that too. Your turntable came with a mat, so what's the big deal? I know, I'm sorry to have tossed yet another decision into the mix. Fortunately, a mat replacement isn't likely to cost you hundreds of dollars, as would a needle upgrade or a new set of speakers. I swapped my mat out for less than 30 bucks. I'd be lying, though, if I said that decision didn't take me weeks to work through. Seriously, I read every article I could find on the subject, some written by the casual listener, others by audiophiles, and others who are, like me, just avid collectors who want to take care of their collection and enjoy it without going broke in the process. In the end, as with everything, opinions will vary. Tastes change, and the mat you buy today may be replaced by another one next year. I still stop to read new articles on the subject to both reinforce my opinion and also justify what I bought or cause me to doubt it. So the question on the table is, what do I care about when it comes to the platter and ultimately the mat that sits on it? Well, the answer is simple. You care about three things. You care about one, static, two, stability, and three, sound. Now you might say number one and three go hand in hand, the static and the sound, and you'd be right. But when I say sound, I mean the tone and depth of the music produced. Static and tone, when it comes to mats, are uh, separate byproducts of the material. With those three considerations called out, let's get right to it and see how they apply. We'll start with felt. Felt mats have been around forever. They can be colorful, some have beautiful designs, and they're pretty easy to find. They won't hurt your record, and they're favored by DJs for this very reason. Because they are frictionless, it's easy to scratch. I know, using the word scratch when talking about records feels inherently wrong, but I'm talking about the art of scratching made famous in, say, hip-hop. Felt mats are also notorious for collecting static, making them a magnet for dust and hair. The makers of anti-static guns probably have a side business selling felt mats. Yeah, I know, I'm just kidding. Anyway. So on a one to five scale with five being the best, how do felt mats rate against our three considerations? Well, for static, I'd give them a one. For stability, I'd give them a three. And for sound, I'd give them a three as well. Next up is rubber. Another popular mat for several reasons, all of which make it a good choice. Rubber mats are durable, they're easy to clean, you can actually wash them, and they reduce static. They are also great at sound separation in that they dampen or kind of absorb the mechanical noise of the turntable's deck from your record. And this also goes for unwanted vibrations. The only downside I've read about but not experienced is that their vibration dampening capabilities might also affect the high end of the sound produced. Think the gentle tapping of a hi-hat. Now I've used a rubber mat myself and I can't say the sound suffered in this regard. So. For static and stability, I'll give them both a five. For sound, well, we'll go with a four. Next is cork. Cork mats are a popular replacement choice for many audiophiles and turntable owners. They're attractive and they come in some very unique designs. They combat static reasonably well and they also absorb the mechanical vibrations of your deck. 
Users of these mats also report a slight improvement when it comes to sound. Cork mats intrigue me, and I almost bought one myself. The only downside I've heard about is that they will eventually need to be replaced, as they are the least durable of the materials I'm mentioning here. They will eventually break down, and when they do, they start to flake, although I'm sure it's only after an extended period of time that you would actually see that happen. So for cork mats, I'm going to give them a 4 across the board for static, stability, and sound. Next up is leather. Leather mats are very unique in that they look amazing on a turntable. Much like with rubber mats, a record will sit nicely on one made of leather. Static is reduced, and leather is said to enhance the warmth of the sound created. They may land on the pricier side, but you can find deer hide leather mats for less than 40 bucks. So for leather mats, I'm going to give them a four across the board for static, stability, and sound. Next is my favorite, so I am a little biased, acrylic. What could be better than a surface that is extremely similar to the record itself? When I first heard about acrylic mats, I have to say I was, I was intrigued. One draw is the claim that it handles vibrations exceptionally well, much better than other material solutions, and it is virtually static free. Now, I am not sure about that. It's just what I had read. The downside? Possibly slippage given the slickness of the surface and the composition similarity to that of the record itself. It's a problem that rubber, cork, and leather all avoid. Given that I use a record stabilizer, which is also known as a record weight, when I play a record, that wouldn't be a concern. So after much deliberation, I finally settled on setting aside the rubber mat that came with my turntable from last year and purchasing an acrylic mat from ProSpin. After a few months, and I was extremely satisfied with that choice. So for static, I'll give acrylic mats a five, for stability, a four, and for sound, a four as well. Now choosing a mat and judging the quality of the results audibly practically and aesthetically is entirely subjective. Not everyone agrees on the most appropriate mat and many will defend their choice passionately. That there is a market for different solutions proves the point. In the end, if you're happy, that's all that matters.